Hey, welcome to C1 Insider, your resource from Creative One for staying up to date on all tax, legal, and regulatory changes that could affect you, your practice, and your clients. Now, we're going to take a look at the five things that you need to be keeping an eye on as it uh, relates to the uh, election cycle, taxation, and we have an industry and uh, government expert, uh, and I am not over overplaying my hand here. Uh, we are joined by Becky Swansburg, Stonewood Financial. Becky, great to have you Thanks here. Thanks so much for having me on. Now, for those of you that don't know Becky, fact check me. So Becky is really would be a political insider. Uh, in her past, she has worked in the uh, Bush White House, mm -hmm. first Bush. Uh, second Bush. Second Double Bush. Up. Second Bush. Okay. Se I, I was dating myself, yes. I guess. Uh, second Bush White House, you've worked on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. with different senators uh, and Congress people. And then you are running Stonewood Financial, which is an amazing uh, company that really has a great focus on tax mitigation for your clients. That's exactly right. Did I get it right? Yep. Oh. So cut my teeth in Washington, <laughs> and now I'm here to translate what it all means for uh, financial professionals and, of course, our clients. Love it. Okay, so we're going to hop in. We're going we're gonna to dive into your expertise. We've got five points that we wanted to talk about, things that you need to be watching for, for your clients, for your practice. The first thing I want to ask you about, Becky, election impact on U.S. tax environment. What should we be keeping an eye on? Yeah, this is a big one. Obviously, uh, we know that there's an election this year. We've heard a little bit about it in the media, a little, a little bit. bit. Uh, every election that we have, we really have to evaluate in two distinct ways for our clients. The first is the uh, short-term or near-term impact. What kind of bills is this Congress and this White House going to pass that may impact 401ks, IRAs, or taxes? The second, of course, though, is what is the long-term impact of all the spending that this Congress and this White House might pass? What does that mean uh, for our economy, for our tax environment, and for our debt? And I think the answer on both of those is that a little bit, regardless of the outcome of this election, taxes are going up. It has to. There's so much that has to be paid for. I mean, look at our spending. Yep. Look at our current debt. Uh, we can't balance the budget and the books unless we get some more tax revenue. Okay, speaking of budget, great segue. Yep. Uh, let's talk about the, what the 2024 budget could mean for national debt. Yeah, so as you know, we've had a little trouble agreeing on a 2024 budget. <laughs> uh, we finally got a continuing resolution passed to avoid a government shutdown in January. That only takes us through March, so they've got to come to an agreement again. But the January agreement was about a $1.66 trillion budget. Now that's just discretionary funds, funds Congress controls to pay for the Department of Education and defense spending. It's about a $28 billion increase over the previous year. What's, a, what's $28 billion those among even, friends? Those numbers don't even make sense no, That's anymore. a little drop in the bucket. But I think what we're seeing is that there's been no indication from Republicans or Democrats, really, that we are going to see significant reductions in federal spending. So when we look, I, I guess maybe the, the threat of the government shutdowns, would they, I hate to say canary in a coal mine because this seems so obvious, but it just seems like we're going to be spending more and more. It's hard to see a path forward where we don't. Okay, so with that being said, uh, this is one that kind of concerns me. What, what are you seeing? What kind of attitudes are we seeing in Washington as it relates to IRAs and 401ks? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say the most acute impact of the 2024 election on our clients could be this changing attitudes towards uh, 401ks and IRAs, particularly for higher net worth savers. Mm. Uh, we have been seeing over the past maybe three to four years, this attitude change in Washington. It started with the Build Back Better legislation, but we even saw it in Biden's 2024 uh, budget proposal. This idea that retirement accounts are really for middle class workers yeah. and tax deferred savings is to help the middle class. And when these wealthier Americans get account balances that are too big for the government, suddenly Congress wants to come in and say, hold on, uh, that's too much money, you're being greedy, and we're no longer going to benefit that in the tax code. Yeah. So I think if we have an election outcome where Biden maintains or the Democrats maintain the presidency and Democrats control at least the House or the Senate, there's a good chance we're going to see more legislation aiming to just uh, put some controls on retirement savings for higher net worth individuals. Yeah, you know, what really worries me there is then we get into that definition thing of who's, how are we defining high net worth? Yeah. And that's such a slippery slope and people tend, you said something off camera, I can't remember what it was oh, like. Well, a proposal, you know, a proposal becomes a, a structure or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's funny. I think a lot of our clients, even if they don't think that they're super wealthy, they're surprised to find out the government feels they're super wealthy. Yeah. So sometimes it's hard to see who the government's gonna come after, but I'll remind us that uh, almost 90% uh, of individual income tax revenue comes from people making $100,000 a year and above. Mm. 
but only less than 40% comes from people making $400,000 a year and above. So if we want to drive tax revenue, we really have to push down into anyone making six figures to get a good impact to the budget long term. Interesting. Okay, with that being said, how as an advisor, if you're looking right into the camera to the advisors that are watching, how do they leverage interest in this election to attract more prospect, more leads, more clients? It's a great question. I think the election is gonna be one of the primary drivers for both lead generation and client conversion. And here's why. Uh, you know, we test a lot of things at Stonewood and one of the top converting email marketing subject lines right now is will the 2024 election impact your retirement? Mm -hmm. And I think it's so impactful because one, it's something that is top of mind for our clients. Two, it's in the media, it's something they're concerned about. But three, they don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. They don't even know how to evaluate if all this volatility in Washington is gonna impact them. And four, they need your help to figure that out. And so for advisors, you know, here at Stonewood, we believe that tax risk is an asset uh, risk that we need to help clients prepare for. And this year particularly, it's gonna be top of mind for everyone because whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, no one feels like things are going yeah. well in Washington. Yeah. No one's sitting at home going, oh, everything's fine, I don't need to worry. So there's this kind of anxiety about what is happening in our nation. And to have an advisor be able to come in and say, we can identify this risk, quantify this risk for you, mm. and then uh, use some approaches to address it, that is a huge sense of relief. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, folks. Uh, Becky, thanks for being on here. Always, love being uh, here. I do want you to know, and I'm gonna put, uh, we'll put a QR code up in the link, but Becky and I are gonna walk from here into our podcast room, and we're gonna expound upon every one of these points. We gotta talk about what's going on, what to watch for, and in fact, just to tease everybody, a uh, couple questions for you to ponder uh, over the next 35 feet as we walk over there. I want to know what you think is going to happen with Roth IRAs, which I think is probably one Good of the question. greatest deals. Yep. And then we have the TCJA that uh, expires in 2025. Yep. Uh, what happens if we have a certain outcome in the election? Does that, what does that do uh, all, to all those conversions? We'll read the tea leaves. Tea leaves will be read. Uh, we look forward to having you join us at the podcast. Uh, but if you have any questions, any way we can be of assistance, reach out to us here at Creative One. And remember, C1 Insider, this is your resource for any changes when it comes to tax, regulatory, the legal environment, and those changes, they're so important because they affect you, your practice, and your client. Thanks for joining us.